If you're just tuning in, then my name is Joel Duggan and this is The Citadel and we are looking at the melon farm that I did last time. I love this thing. It's pumping out melons like bananas, even though bananas are not things that we have in Minecraft. Uh, but I'm really happy with this. I did a little bit of path work uh, last night after the stream. Oh, hey, speak of the devil. Watch this. Was I too slow? I was too slow. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I did a lot of work here uh, last night, just kind of mapping out a path. I put in a nice little path here to go over to this little farm. Uh, a lot of people asked last time, by the way, too, and this is a custom potato and custom beetroot texture that I made. I designed these. Because uh, if you don't know, I'm an artist, and I've been learning a lot about pixel art and stuff. It looks a little bit funky up front. These are a little bit clearer, but if you back up, check this out. If you back up a ways, they start to look a lot better. You see, it looks like leaves. And it, I mean, this is just still bright, but beetroot is pretty bright to begin with. Um, but as I was saying, I did a lot of work here. I connected everything up. So everything is sort of like nestled into, into the neighborhood now. I'm very happy with this. Uh, however, we are getting a lot of lag on the server and I've got a funny feeling it's because of the, it's because of the, uh, elevators that we're sending these to, because they're still the old block glitch elevators where you use a dropper to punch an item into a glass block and then send it straight up or actually any solid block actually will work. Uh, but they have to be in like a plus sign formation. So we have to go check that out. Uh, the other thing that I did is because Alistair um, moved out or has cleared out a lot of stuff directly under my log cabin. Uh, I've got a really cool episode coming up in the next little while, uh, which is a recap of the very, very first episode I did on the server. And you can see what happened is that Alistair had moved in directly below me, but he's moved around a little bit. So there's not nearly as much stuff down here. So I was able to uh, extend this down, get a proper landing. And then we've actually got access to the underground water stream from underneath my cabin, which is super cool because I was looking for a north entrance to this waterway. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. But what we need to do, uh, these pumpkins and melons are all traveling along this waterway. And they're heading down to the greenhouse and I need to I need to run down this way and uh, and take a look and see if my frame rates drop like crazy when we get close to uh, the greenhouse and and see what we can do to uh, fix I guess the uh, the item elevators I want to transform them into water elevators the only thing that sucks about that is that i like the look of the greenhouse right now and currently putting those water elevators into it will change the way that it looks so this is the stopping point where everything turns around and goes down towards the greenhouse this is such a maze down here it's cool but it's it's a maze uh, i also have to take a look i'm pretty sure i'm going to tear this out today it's unfortunate that it doesn't work because it keeps on getting unloaded. Uh, Sharky and his sons had built this on Father's Day. We did like a, a server event, but all of this is unfortunately not working. Uh, so I had to stop it because it was causing some lag as well. So that I might just tear out. Uh, but then also uh, we, have, we have this here. And so these are these old uh, glass elevators that I think are causing the problem and I want to replace them with water elevators. It's not a big deal. It's just that we have to, we do have to maybe move this water stream. Like it, it's, it's going to be a little bit of work. Um, we just have to move the, the angle at which these things collect. So these currently shoot things straight up. I guess we could put a block of soul sand there and just have it go straight up into a water stream. That could work. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I have to change things. So we can try a few things to see if we can get it to go. But the problem is when I go up top, you'll see. Whoop, oh, I hate that. That's such a strange bug. That weird camera whooshy thing. So strange. So here's where I usually have a huge frame drop. Right when I go to here, 19, 36, 25, like 17. Like normally I can get about 60 frames on the server. So this is, this is a little bit chunky. Uh, so the issue, we've got some water here because what was happening is that the, the way that new hoppers were working, this was a hopper line 
and then hoppers in 1.13 change their hitbox and items would not go up to the top of them they would they would hang down here at the bottom so we have the items coming up here but we're gonna have to turn this whole thing into an item elevator with water and so when you're outside the greenhouse particularly on this side you're gonna see instead of these colored glasses you're gonna see blue water stream which I guess is not gonna be the end of the world it's just that the Minecraft blue water is such an ugly bright color it's not nearly as transparent as I'd like it to be and I haven't had the chance to mess around with it in 1.13 so instead of this this orange pillar we're gonna have a water pillar there so it's not gonna be hard I don't think but it's it's gonna be interesting see like look why are those floating there well they're floating there because the potatoes are full um that's the other issue that we have is that we have to add i think we have to add a sub a sub double chest to allow for more stuff uh really what we should have is shulker box loaders but i don't have uh don't have that set up yet so so that's the plan for the day that is what we're going to attempt uh is to fix these these water streams so i guess the first thing we need to do is make sure that we've got soul sand some redstone and kelp because the kelp is what we're going to need to hook up these these water streams down here i think that's it because really it's just going to be a matter of starting at the top digging our way down and then swimming back up shouldn't be too too bad and i realize i've just i've missed a whole bunch of stuff in the chat here <laughs> uh what was i say so elster says he wasn't using the space anymore so he vacated awesome that gave me a lot of room uh elkor 95 is here hey hello are you sure it's the glitch evader that's causing lag or might you have items overflow from really productive farms i think it's both i think that's the problem i think it's both because if i have really productive farms the items first have to come up those elevators and and then they get glitchy and laggy and i think if i can get the items up there quickly and then have an overflow somehow uh then then we can sort that out so that's the plan uh alistair says if you need kelp winky face yes alistair has a very cool uh he has a very cool kelp farm uh so do i have kelp here if not i know i have some got some kelp there I feel like I have a lot more than that is it in my green bin 59 I should have enough between those two between those two stacks I should have enough to do the elevators that's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that should be fine so one of the things I wanted to talk about with everybody is some changes that are happening to the Twitch stream. Uh, I'm hoping to stream more and I'm hoping to stream more artwork, but I'm also looking to um, learn a lot more about like having overlays and doing some um, subscription rewards, donation rewards, and I, I shouldn't say rewards, visual, I guess, notifications. Uh, for people that are like you know the top streamer or the top the top donator for the stream the top um, top donator for the month that sort of stuff so I downloaded stream labels and I'm looking to learn how to use that um, but I need to come up with a theme for the emotes that I want to make for the twitch uh, server or the twitch chat and the subscription badges those are the two things that I need that I need feedback on so if you guys have uh, any ideas for a theme you know something where uh as you are subscribed for longer the icon next to your name will get cooler and cooler now i'm an artist so i can come up with all kinds of stuff but uh or draw all kinds of stuff but i need i need an underlying uh theme i think so i think we'll start with one of these things that's not full because that will be easier uh so carrots so really I should probably start from the outside and it should be just a matter of digging down once we realize that once we know that the soul sand idea will work because then it's only putting an item into one into one block so these are all color coded so this is the carrots so if i get rid of these get rid of this Place this with soul sand. 
like that. I can put these back. And now if I get up here and just do a little bit of a test. So if I put a, we should probably put an infinite water stream down here somewhere. Let's put it out here temporarily. Let's just do this. Because I know I'm going to need, I'll eventually screw up and drop a bucket of water and not be able to get it back. So let's do that for now. So what I want to check, so it works, it, it spits items through through the soul sand, um, but what I wanted to check to see if this worked. Wow. <laughs> so survey says yes. <laughs> the carrots, the carrots work. Uh, if I put more carrots in here, do I, did I pick them up? I did. Okay. So that's, that's going to be the solution I would think is to, is to just replace that first block of glass with soul sand and go from there. Why don't I just replace this, take this away, do that, do this, put that in there and then I can put kelp down. And that is, so once that grows up, it will create water sources once I am able to fill this with water source. And I can do that from above. The good news is that this water stream is going to be easy to replace. Uh, we can just grab that. And this should be, you can see our kelp and our carrots down there. So this should be a straight shot down through here. Uh, and then we just have to, I guess, punch our way out the side of it. And then we'll put a water source here again right on this block and it'll flow down and that way. And that should solve the problem. The tricky part is going to be keeping the items inside of these blocks when they come up from the elevator. I might have to raise the side of the, the greenhouse. We'll see. I'm gonna miss my color coded glass, but whatever. Hey Duds, how's it going? And Jared's here too. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so success. We, well, we landed and we also destroyed our kelp. So can I get out of here again? I feel like I'm gonna have to just bust open the roof here a little bit. It's gonna make things a little bit easier for me. Do that. So that will give us, that water should come down straight into that and not flow out, I don't think. We're gonna test this on one and then we can repeat the process on the other the other columns. This go up here. I think this is just going to be a lot faster if I do this. So now, what did I say? Uh, water stream has to go there. So it will go in both directions. That's good. Now, eventually this is going to turn into uh, uh, full on sources. So let's just swim down here. It's not nearly as far as I thought. And for anybody that doesn't know what I'm doing is I'm using the kelp to create water sources because when kelp grows in a full block, it creates, it creates a full water source. So I think that should be it for that. How, how many was that? That was only like 20 blocks, not even. No. Oh. Wow. Okay, right. Mental note. Mental note, not good. Good thing that there's a water source here. I hope that didn't mess up any roadstone. I don't see anything. This is really, it's not complicated, but it's, it's several dropper circuits that are all connected. So I really don't want it to mess up because it's a pain in the butt to build. So mental note, we'll have to be careful with that. Well, since there's no soul sand here yet, I would say the thing to do is going to be to swim down from the top and break the kelp again. 
I think I got lucky too, Alistair. I agree. And in the dev, hello. I did it again. I'm just, I'm on an autopilot. I'm always going into the greenhouse and I'm working on the greenhouse roof. So I think we can just go down here because that soul sand is not there. A carrot halfway up is a good sign. So we can just do this. That should not be a problem. I wonder, I wonder if I can just break this and then put a bucket here. Ah, victory. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Uh, and then the question is, will this stop the carrots from coming out into this area here? So half a stack of carrots. They go up like crazy. Let's see if we can beat them. Because I want to see if they're popping out the top. That's the issue. Looks like they're all going where they're supposed to go. It stopped. 32. Wow. That worked the first time. That is a successful test. And now we just have to repeat that. So just dig out the insides first. And it was just soul sand and dirt. Make it easy. Whoops. Soul sand. And dirt. The problem is that we've got two potato farms and two carrot farms, but the two potato farms are always loaded and the um, carrot farms, only one of them is always loaded. Same over on this side. So we've got melons. These are new. We just put these in the other day. Well, the filters are new. We've always had the, uh, I guess the capability, but we didn't have the actual farm. So we can remove this and that. Grab this. I'm glad I don't have to do a lot of retooling up here. It's at least a relief in that way. Neon Chicken 9000, that's a cool name. Thanks, man. Much appreciated, Whip. It's great to have you on the show. We've had a lot of really great feedback about that episode of Sponge Chunks. So really happy that you just decided to do it. So for all the new raiders, welcome. Uh, this is the underside of the greenhouse. We have a system of farms that are sending a lot of items this way. And we've got carrots, wheat, potatoes, melons, pumpkins, and string. And we are changing the old block glitch elevators into water stream elevators. And we've done one, but we're now in the process of repeating the test that we just did and doing it over the next, the next few. So I'm just going through and I'm mining out the old glass elevators right now. Minimal changes, but uh, so far it's going well. So what, what do people want to see? What, what do you want to see for, for a Twitch emote? Um, cause we've got, I mean, really the first one I'm going to worry about is the tier one. Cause that seems to be the, the one that people would be using the most. What, what kind of, I guess a hype emote or a cheer emote, something that would be positive, but should it be like a cartoon of me? Should it be, I don't want it to be specifically Minecraft related because I do, I do want to do some other streaming. So I don't want to limit myself by theming it to a game. I sealed that off, right? All right. Well, let's live dangerously. Pretty sure I did. Sorry guys, sometimes the chat goes a little bit fast for me. Uh, so this is the Citadel. It is a survival multiplayer server. Uh, we do have a few data packs, but it's all just vanilla plus. Like it's just quality of life. Things like um, having shulker boxes um, spawn from endermites over purper. -pur. Nothing too, too powerful. Um, the dragon drops elytra. And it's just because we are, we're we're a group of very casual players so not everybody has the time to grind and and risk everything just to have some shulker boxes so the server's been up for a little over a year and it, we started off in 112 but we did not reset uh we um we updated and so a bunch of stuff broke and 
A lot of it can be found on my YouTube channel. Uh, Cosmic, I think, oh, look, Nightbot already did it. So there's a link to my YouTube channel in there, and you guys can go over and subscribe and check out the almost 50 videos worth of content uh, that we have going over there. So that would be really cool. Uh, and that will catch you up because uh, I have been making videos for a while, but unfortunately uh, I had a hard drive crash and a lot of stuff got lost. But uh, there's a little bit of custom texture pack happening. And beyond that, it's just, I guess, a basic SMP. You know, there's six people playing actively. Would be my guess, my guesstimate. Uh, yes. For the people that are new, uh, for me, not just my Minecraft server, I'm a cartoonist and an illustrator and a podcaster. And so you might recognize my voice from the Spawn Chunks because I am one half of that podcast. And Pixel Riffs, of course, is the other half. So now that we have all of the water in here, oh, water needs to go back into this one. Now we can just go back down with the kelp and turn everything into water sources. And the funny thing is, like, I think you can actually leave the kelp in here and, and it's fine. Like, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to break it. Because the items will go past it. As a matter of fact, I think I can just go back down right now before this turns into a water column. Yeah, look, that was some wheat coming up right there. Technically, these don't even have to be bubble columns. We could just leave them as water and the items would come up slower. But I'm worried that that would make them group up. Out of curiosity, White Fryer says, what mic do you use? I am using a uh, blue microphone Yeti. It's a USB mic. It's on the, it's got a condenser mode. It's not the best. Uh, it's also not the best the way that I have it up for streaming because I kind of have it between my monitor and my second monitor so that when I'm turning to, to look at the chat and speak or turning to look at the, uh, the, the game to speak, the, the audio is consistent. Uh, however, uh, when I podcast, I use the same mic with an additional pop filter and some other settings that I run through uh, a great little application called uh, Audio Hijack. And so I use like a low pass filter and some other stuff to get rid of the white noise. When I first got it, the Yeti was great, but over time I found that it does pick up some higher frequency things. There's an ongoing joke in the Spawn Chunks um, podcast that uh, you can hear Blue Jays in my backyard. So things that are very high pitched uh, will squeak through the condenser mode on the mic. Uh, but for example, like I could have a fan going just outside my door and you wouldn't be able to hear it. Got a little ahead of myself, got excited because I had all these new people in the chat and I need to go down with buckets of water. And I think that's really it. It's because once I go down here, I should be able to just remove this Add a bucket and see you later. <laughs> this has been out for months and it never gets old. Did I put that at the right level? Oh, I think I, I think these are meant to be just a little bit taller. I think, yeah, I think maybe we should put them there just to be sure. So same idea here. Let's go down. Remove the dirt. Beautiful. I've been podcasting for about seven years and the Yeti has been fantastic. Uh, for anybody that is getting into podcasting, I would highly encourage them to get it. The one thing I will say is that the stand that comes with the Yeti is very hard and echoes uh, with anything because it's, it's, a, it's a desk mounted uh, thing. So I would highly recommend spending 20 bucks on Amazon and get yourself a mic arm and then attach it to something that's not your desk. So I can type and, and it won't vibrate the, the microphone, which is fantastic. I can't remember the brand of the boom arm, but it was, it was no more than $20 on Amazon. So very, very doable. And for the beginning podcaster in Canada, the Yeti is about 150 bucks, but absolutely worth it when you compare other podcasting mics that are in like the 400, 300 range. Uh, and then, oh wow, that block didn't work at all. There we go. 
We. Uh, and then the stand is 20 So like for under $200, depending on what you have to pay for shipping, depending on where you are in the world, uh, it's actually not, uh, not too bad to get excellent, excellent audio for a beginning podcaster. Because I will tell you right now, as good as your content may be, if you have a crappy mic that gets a lot of a lot of um, background noise and if the audio is terrible as much as i may want to listen it's going to be really really hard i have one more to go i think right i think it's just this last one yeah swimming up and down in minecraft now is just so good zip and just like that all of these are now completely updated to the new water elevator so let's find something that's not in these chests uh, that's just going to be a bunch of potatoes there's kelp i guess the kelp would be the easiest thing to test with so there's nothing in there no kelp in there there is kelp in here kelp in here string oh kelp there kelp there i don't know why the pumpkins are hopping into this chest can anybody explain that to me i don't know why things are getting to the top chest when the bottom chests are not full it's got something to do with hoppers pulling and pushing and stuff and i just i've never been able to really put my finger on what's going on so the weed is actually almost full too do you know if you can can you uncraft wheat so if i take nine wheat and i craft it in the crafting bench here into a hay bale can i then uncraft that i can well that's going to solve the wheat problem we don't need to we don't need to to keep it as wheat we can just craft it into into hay bales and stick those in the bottom that should be good cosmic dancer another gift sub for duds that's fantastic thank you Joel, when you get a chance, could I see the inside of the greenhouse? Uh, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you can. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I'm a little behind in the chat. Uh, yeah, this is just, it was something I came up with. Uh, the whole idea is that this area, so this greenhouse, uh, was something I built. I designed it in creative. And the idea behind it all is that our villager trading center is just right in here. So all the farmers for your emeralds are right here. So when you need more stuff, you just pop out here, grab what you need. It's all community, uh, and then go from there. And the pumpkins and the melons, we can take the sign down now because in the last couple of streams, we finally hooked everything up. I think what I'll do when I'm finished this redstone stuff, I'll uh, or this waterway stuff, I'll take the new folks from from Whip's raid, and we'll go take a look at the meadows. Not the whole server, but we'll just we'll walk back through the the meadows and we can see what's going on. I'll explain the other end of the farms and stuff and where they are so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back down and i'm going to put x amount of kelp in each dropper and as long as that all gets up to the chests then i'll be satisfied that this is now updated and functional so let's just do like five or six kelp do five right so one two three four five and Stick this in here. One, two, three, four, five. So that's five kelp in every dropper. And now we should, I don't know which chest they're going to be in, but each column of chests should now have five. Oh, should have five, four, and one. See, that's weird. That to me is strange. Considering there's five. There's five slots in a hopper. So why didn't all the kelp go to the right spot? Five kelp here, five kelp there. That's that side sorted out. This is not gonna happen. There's gonna be, so the potatoes is the only one I can't test, but that's fine. If five out of six of these work, hmm, I wonder where did the kelp go for this one? Interesting, well, so the, the wheat didn't work? That's odd. I wonder if it's in the hoppers. Can I see them? Ah, 
There we go. So strange. See, like, all of this, this should be in this hopper, correct? Like, that's how that should work. This hopper should be full before everything above it starts to fill up, right? And there's there's obviously kelp and stuff up there. Let me just... There's going to be more than five. Oh, I just knocked my potato and my item frame off. <laughs> just I realized that as soon as I placed that block. I was like, darn it. Uh, okay. Um, item frame... Potato, mouse lag, holy smoke. Okay. If you have lag, it may force the hopper to see the chest before the lower hopper, says Pixel Plague. Ooh, very cool. Thank you. Uh, and Elkhorn says, yes, down then over, but lag can screw up the tick checking. Ah, so that's probably what it is. That could be what it is. So I'm looking... So the la like last week when I came over here, I was not paying attention to what was happening up here, but I was standing here and getting like four frames a second and wondering what the crap was going on. So I'm wondering if that might be it. Is the sun going down? Oh, this is going to be cool because some of the farms light up at night, which is nice. I should probably eat something too. Where's my, where's my lunch? Food, art, Minecraft, geeky stuff. Joel in five words. Yeah, Cosmic, that's not too bad not too far off so the villager trading center is in there we call it the hotel of eternity and this is the main farm and so what we've got here actually I can pop in this way there is a villager oops come on let's play minecraft let's let's close the close the gates so this is a wheat farm and there's a villager up in here that is hard at work uh, harvesting the wheat and putting it away uh, the too high wheat texture is 100 percent Jermsey boy. Uh, and then I changed the color just to kind of match the default Minecraft, just to make it a little bit brighter. It looks great in his texture pack, but his texture pack is 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 dimmer. It's a more muted. Uh, we've got the minecart here, harvesting everything. And what's nice about these farms is that, that they all have a chest full of stuff here, and then it's minus one item. And as a new item comes in, the overflow goes on to the greenhouse. And we can actually go down here and check this out. And this will be the same for all these farms. I won't show all of it, but uh, here is the dropper uh, and the circuit that monitors that chest. And then it just kind of gets shot out into this water stream and then onto, onto the greenhouse. So this is the wheat. And then this is everything else, carrots and potatoes and string, pumpkins, melons, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, the, the wheat just needed to go in a different direction because I didn't want the wheat to go to the villagers. So, and that just went off there. And then we've got an overflow for the uh, the seeds. But every every farm here has this overflow kind of system. And if we go over here, we've got sheep, etc. blah, blah, blah. Everybody has seen these. But then we've got potatoes, potatoes, and carrots. So the fact that we've got two potato farms is why that potato um, stack is, is totally full. Because the other carrot farm is like way down there. I don't know if we can see it. I might be able to use Optifine to target it. Uh, yeah, so that's the other carrot farm. And that was the first farm that we built, and it was originally feeding the, the villagers. So that's why that only loads half the time. And so when I started the stream today, we started off talking about this melon farm that I built just yesterday, I think. Uh, and then the pumpkin farm is here. And so same thing, both of these have these chests that dump everything into a water stream that connects. Uh, and the string comes from a spider farm that's that's deep in the mine over there. And we, we won't bother to go look at that. But uh, but that's that's what's what's heading towards the uh, the greenhouse and everything that's over there. And the idea is that because Dartmouth Meadows kind of runs north south, like if we take off here, take a look at the meadows. So the whole development just kind of runs down in this direction. And so as people are playing, <clears throat> excuse me, the items are constantly going underneath this water stream into the, uh, the greenhouse. 